What's up guys? This is the Rifleman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War. Let's play as the Italian States. And to pick up where we left off, we are about to wipe the Cherokee off of the map and this is going to be the episode in which we end our Italian campaign. But first of all, we must take Teleco and Jakasa away from the Cherokee. This first, uh, this first battle will not um, take a particularly long <laughs> time because it's mostly artillery. And the rest of the troops will be gobbled up by our own army. So let's attack them. And more than I would probably... Um, or to resolve an action like this, but fundamentally I think this episode is going to be a bit shorter than than is normal, so uh, I don't think we are going to be um, losing too much time in terms of... Uh, well, we're not displacing too many more important things in this campaign. The simple fact of the matter is we're now wrapping up. So we've got two infantry units three artillery units and a general's unit from memory dragoons fire it will off form a mighty cavalry block yeah there's their army all my artillery is going to be opening up on these entrenched positions uh, quick climb isn't any good See, they're doing some damage. They're all focusing on that particular native unit. Native artillery unit. I do not... Well, I think because they've deployed on top of each other like that, they're actually not going to be that useful when it comes to actually uh, attacking us. Maintain the offensive. There's no worries around bumping into the remaining Cherokee troops. Let's take all our let's take our foot artillery at least. And then to focus on the chief's bodyguard all the way to the rear. I'm just curious but where the other enemy aha there they are. All their troops are to the rear. Let's get by Dragoons to skirmish the General's bodyguard. My cuirassier can collectively smash into that unit of warriors. My infantry here are going to open up on the native artillery with muskets. There's the native garrison bowmen. My General's going to be looking for them. An almighty charge. Three cuirassier units. 270 troops. That's right, warriors. Try and charge in. Understandably, there's only so much that the native warriors can do alone like that. And all my cavalry charge on into the chief's bodyguard. Shaken. I mean, that's a lot of heavy cavalry. So let's pull my general out to try and make sure he chases down some of these units that might wish to come back. So these gun crews look determined to push us. Ceasefire. Artillery's broken once more. Everyone else is focusing on the general's bodyguard. Might take a bit of time to go down, but to be honest, by the looks of it, they're both shattered. Yeah, no, not all of you. Chief's bodyguard still needs some knocking out. They've lost 40 of their number. Plenty more. Plenty more casualties where that came from. Everyone else is shattered, so this is all that remains. I'm curious where their chief is. What well, does it matter? He's died now. But yes, that was Teleco. 
secured. Again, this is partly because we have um, destroyed the Mughal Empire so quickly, and also these regions have become liberated, and we haven't given them enough time to hop on to the build a bandwagon. So they haven't; they just haven't had the time to gather the strength needed. So then, Mr. Cross Casanova is going to attack the garrison here at Chikasa. And that will be the last Cherokee territory uh, captured. And there's two more, three more territories to take. There's Bogota, Santa Fe, and the Plains Nations deep in the heartland of America. Which has rebuffed us once before, but we have destroyed their army in the field. So my guns deploy off axis, but with a reasonable arc. How it says an artillery deploy. So again, this is similar to the last battle, but a bit different. There is a bit of a larger army facing us. We want to be a bit more sensible. The general rule, though, is we want to push up against the enemy. Our rockets are out of range. So if I right click the ground, so you can't do attack ground with the rockets. Artillery is out of range for quickline. What about shrapnel shot? Yeah, there's armed tribesmen, but we're not we don't we're not entirely sure where the remainder of their troops are hidden. That's part of the reason why I deployed my guns out here wide, so that if we deploy them there, there's a terrain issue about why they can still engage, in theory. Let's get them all to engage that armed tribesman unit. Yeah, they're advancing to our line. So the artillery smashes in. Aha! There's their other units. So where's my regiment of horse? Let's run them in to knock out the run them in to knock out the guns. Let's change our artillery targets to engage the bulk of the troops on the left. Because actually that's we're gonna need to give them a bit more firepower in support. A regiment of horse can take care of the guns. My dragoons have done an admirable job. Well, they can pursue. Take a foot artillery and engage the chief's bodyguard. Hello. Some more delicious troops. Native warriors, native bowmen. Pull my dragoons back because the general looks like he wants to try and continue his attack. You men probably need to straighten up a little bit more. The attack is on. You men charge the native warriors. Charge the bowmen. Focus on the tribesmen with your skirmishing. So you men are bowmen, so let's charge through. Cavalry unit can focus on that unit of bows. Mm. 
artillery is focusing on the long range threats still. There we go, my Curiosier here, that's exactly what I wanted to see. Creep over the horizon. These native troops have routed. Let's try push up to like here. Yeah, my cuirassier made short work of them. Is the chief's bodyguard still around? He is. Let's start to try and okay. Everyone except for you push the right. They're shattered. Dragoons advance. Fire at will on. Put a volley into these armed tribesmen. And charge them yourself. Fire at will off. Howitzers go after the chief. Same with my foot artillery. Last unit of native bowmen. Oh, yep, tribesmen are down. Dragoons turn with fire it will on to face off the chief. Let's just cease artillery. So my dragoons, I, I want you to engage the chief's bodyguard. So just sit there and engage the chief. Now the regiment of foot should engage as well. Curacier smash into that unit of bowmen. I mean, these units are quite clustered together, but it looks like the chief's going to run into them. They're not hidden, so. Fire it will off. Fire it will on. Form squares! The Great Wall of Interlocking Squares. Well, I think that's the end of the uh, General's Bodyguard, to be honest. They're not going to do too well against all of these square formations set up together. Nope, there they go. Dragoons are in position to fire a volley into them. Uh, not in. <laughs> not in enough. Not close enough to get the volley off, but that is the Cherokee destroyed. Understandably, they're not too happy with us, but let's build the happiness building just to get them off our back. Good stuff. Region captured, trait gained, trait gained, region captured. So we've got Santa Fe, Yankton, and Bogota. So let's hit in turn. I mean, all these armies that are currently marching towards the coast in India, their future... Well, they're done. They are done. I'm sending lots of troops towards Yankton. Go on, pirates. Let's see what you can do. You served your king and kept the pathway into Colombia open. No, we are not going to make peace with New New Spain. The Plains Nation peoples, they demand only half a million to become my protectorate. And no, we will not accept terms. The world will be ours. So, 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 let's get cracking. Come on, let me, let me go. Yeah, you can all stay where you are. Doesn't matter. We're earning 200,000 a turn. 
Obviously, we can be making loads more than that if we disband all the armies we no longer need, but I don't think it really matters. Oh god, Bogotá's not even garrisoned. So it's just... Oh, they're going to refuse our surrender, our demand, eh? In which case, then, let's take the city. We're not that far off of the other two territories. I'm going to take a couple of turns, but it looks like the new Spaniards don't really want to... Uh, Want to make a show of it. But let us see. <laughs> yeah. So, mortars, a bit of some units of line infantry, but mostly it's a festival of irregular troops. So, let's take our guard units, elite units, and native warriors to go through the town. The bulk of my army is going to go around the flank. <laughs> flank it is! Give my native warriors an aggressive order to push. Push up the flank. Yep, quick climb ahoy. So sorry, regiment of foot, you'll get smacked. These things will happen. Drive up our left flank. We'll see how you like quick climb. Give my native troops an order to just assault. To bravely charge their way across the open field. I might switch my howitzers to round shot to prevent too many too much friendly fire there. <laughs> my native troops hit their line. That was enough to make them break. Shatter no less. My infantry advance up, form a line. I mean, look at this. At least they resisted. At least they resisted. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. The city is ours. So then what have we got? Boop. City is taken, Mr. Rui, replenish, Mr. Spinelli, or Mario Torricelli. He can leave Panama to prevent them from marching west. Let's take Mr. Spinelli and he can sit on this road north of Bogota. Then up here, we're very close to Santa Fe. You're gonna, this is real canary in a coal mine <laughs> style thinking here. You send in my first army that's technically in range to hit the city. And if we get ambushed like we did last time... I mean, now they're visible on the crossing. So Mr. Spinelli, you will engage them. Draw their forces down, potentially opening the road to a new force from the south. But yeah, I don't think this is going to cause too much bother. To be honest, it might even be a uh, an interesting river battle, which because of our firepower advantage, we can force them to attack us, rather than us attacking them, which we should do, strictly speaking, because of the battle engaged. Nope, it's actually going to be a good old land, regular um, pitch battle. So advance with caution. But we have a good amount of cavalry. Mr. Spinelli, you will not be excused combat duties. Oh, that's reinforcements from the garrison, isn't it? Um, actually, I probably want to shoot them a bit. 
before sending my cavalry in. So that native lance unit should get gunned down. It's going to be heavy cavalry to charge the gunners. You men cease fire. Quick climb, fire. Ah, oh, they've gone. They've cloaked. Pivot, fire well on. There's native troops in here somewhere. Well, the gunners are not in good shape. More of them are appearing on the right flank. This combat's going on a bit longer than I'd like. <clears throat> and especially because there's this combat. That's where a bulk of their troops are. Oh, I don't think it's probably going to push the right the left flank that much. So the medicine men are gonna charge into the flank of my mercenaries. But we are going to charge into their flank as well. And actually, the regiment of horse might go on to hit the musketmen. General's bodyguard can flee. Medicine men are wavering. This is what heavy cavalry gets you. It's very flexible. Get you men out of square so you can reload. Men are coming in. Who's that? Garrison native bowmen. So if my horse, if my heavy cavalry can beat the medicine men. Let's get them involved in that action against the musketmen. There we go, our volleys have repelled a number of enemy units. Let's retarget their attack forces with quick climb. The musketmen are still sticking around. Where's my charge you men into the bowmen? Push up my right flank. Warrior society are in are involved. New men charge the rear of the warrior society. Now, they're gonna have to hold against my heavy cavalry. So my infantry surrounding them. Well, my infantry charging to the rear. Looks like it's done a really good job against the Warrior Society. Yep, yeah, keep attacking. My infantry over here is going to do a... Hmm. Let's bring my heavy cavalry against the bows. They might just drop a few quicklime shots on them. And run past them. Put artillery focus on the chief's bodyguard. Are you in trap range? You are. Beautiful. Ooh. Oh, it's a bit dangerous because it's going, detonating behind my troops. But that bow unit's gone. Charge into the back of the native warriors with my cavalry. Yeah, they did not like that. Troop of infantry wavering, understandably. Keep this line infantry firing. 
keep engaging the bowmen with quick climb fire. Whoa! Round shot the chief's bodyguard, please. You men attack the warrior's sight on one flank. You bring my general up. The mercenaries can also hit them in the flank. Howitzers also hit the chief's bodyguard. Heavy cavalry hit the bowmen. Let's get these mercenaries around the flank of these medicine men. We've got another another unit came in from the flank. Generals charged in to hit the warrior society who are wavering. Both the warrior societies that are wavering. Bring my heavy cavalry back across. Format to engage the general with volley fire. <laughs> so many men. Whoops. Stay away from them, heavy cavalry. Your job is to make your way over to the bowmen. Or they might divert one unit of infantry. Ah, there we go. With five cavalrymen left, the bows are routed and the general has routed. So unless there's someone hidden on the field, and there is not, the Plains Nations peoples have suffered a significant loss outside of their city, and the bulk of their army has been destroyed. So you men are going to hold here and replenish, advance to within range of the city, but really, wait for Mr Spinelli to come up to deliver the killing blow, you're going to push up and hit Santa Fe. Oh look, Grand Canada, in Canada. Grand Canada, Grand Granada, that's the one, Grand Canada. Let's hit in turn. Just let everyone that's not really going to be important to run around. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to auto that. Push them away. We're not going to capture the city by auto resolving it. <laughs> We're just going to um, keep pushing away that army that wants to save them. So let's go rebellion in Pennsylvania. Well, good job we've got more armies than we can shake a stick at. Hold on a minute, who are you? Well, first of all, because they're Pennsylvania rebels, they I think they pretty much have to go for Pennsylvania. So if they run around us, with the Continental Dragoons and Leeds Legion to try and take Philadelphia, they're going to be very upset. I don't think they go for... Any other territory apart from that which they rebelled from. Not that it'll matter, because... Ah, oh, you're one turn away. <laughs> you guys keep replenishing. I could just attack... I could, <laughs> I could just attack and then make my... Um, deploy this army just to run away. So I bring in the other army, the reinforcing army, to do most of the actual fighting. How does that sound like a sound for a plan? Or I just let this army fight it out, hold on for as long as they can. No. <laughs> Let's at least take the troops that are below 100 men. Now we're talking. Pure firepower. So then you can deploy on the flank as well. And then you two can deploy on the left. 
howitzers deploy back here to be honest my cavalry is going to run as well and my general is here and everyone else is deployed so you men must flee fortunately the edge of the map is just there I mean, to be honest, I'm not. I could well be overthinking this because the enemy do not have a significant battlefield presence. Balthazare is coming in on the flank. He can stay walking at at a regular pace. Let's bring both these chaps up a bit quicker. So as they charge the guns after being hit by quicklime, shrapnel shot, canister shot. Dare I take a super artillery team? How it just can go away. Open fire. <laughs> ah, they, they, they hit my line, but well, they got pushed back. Oh, that sounded like a police siren from the 1950s. What the hell was that? Outside. Ugh. Blast them! You men hit the native warriors. All my artillery. It's going to switch to round shot. Smash. Trouble is, is these garrison warriors are good units early on against infantry that are that are a bit more fresh faced, but as soon as you start to put something a bit more capable against them, they really struggle. Bring up Baldazari, you can chase down this unit as they flee. Unless we can break them ourselves, which we can. So let's pull our cuirassier back. Let's combine with the 27th Horse, Horse Guards and the 21st Regiment of Foot. As we're regrouping, we can fire off a volley at the native bowmen. Immediately start running. Yeah, my QS, yeah, I've got something to say to you. They're shattered, so I might pull these QS here back. Hit that native bow unit. At least get them in the charge, get them in first. New men hit them, general can chase after them, regiment of force can also chase after them. All my artillery cease firing. Curacier is going to have a good time against the native warrior unit. Yep, they do not like the fact that their capital now belongs to the Italians. If you don't stop running, you're going to get within gun range. Some of my mercenaries didn't like trying to flee.
pull my cavalry away because yeah, look, they've just charged. They've just in, tr in trying to escape from my units. They fled into musket range. Hello. And there's always another unit when you're fighting against the native native factions. Uh, you have at it. Although to be honest, this that looks like an army, a unit that came back. Howitz has engaged the bowmen with quicklime because they're definitely within range. Just hit that native warrior unit because they've already lost a significant number of men. Curacier alone will probably be able to do it. Quicklime is falling against the native bowmen down to 26 men. We've killed their general, sir. Yeah. The general's unit, at the loss of their chief, have decided to retreat under the hooves of the armoured Italian cavalry. But there we go. <laughs> the play, uh, I can't, the Black Hills peoples, the Black Hills nation, Black Hills peoples. Can't remember. They have been defeated by our empire, righting a wrong that was done many, many years ago. You push south to Santa Fe, but it's not going to matter. That was the rebellion in Pennsylvania, which isn't going to matter because... I mean, look. <laughs> yeah, they, didn't, they wouldn't like that. That's why you push them up to there. Upgrade that, upgrade that. Upgrade the church school, then just sit at the Iroquois Territory and build bucket loads of militia but it's not going to matter because we're going to hit end turn then we're going to fight one last battle outside like the city of Santa Fe one of New Spain's Ooh. oh I thought that was going to be a lot more enticing than it actually was um, this force that's coming up under Felipe Pizarro is pitiful we've got a lot of enemy troops coming in on the right flank let's do it this is a fight a fight before the eventual defeat of the city, they will probably not surrender because they are a... it is the last territory of a faction and usually they tend not to surrender because the AI is aware that they, if they surrender they don't win anything. There's no point to surrendering. So let's take four units to form a forward facing front line but it looks like these trees are actually causing a bit of an issue so I'm going to play one gun team to the rear and then the bulk of our troops are going to deploy on the right somewhere so you've deployed these two units of guns are going to deploy like so Bulk of my howitzers on the right flank. Cavalry is going to be a bit more split up. The general is going to be on the right flank. Ha! <laughs> Even better than that, they're coming in from behind us. In which case, then let's take these four plus you two and advance. These men. Form a front line to the rear. So our cavalry let's gobble up this first army. Fundamentally, look, most of these units, except for the tribal auxiliary, are weak. So let's, let's take you guys. See if you can start attack grounding quick climb. You men charge the militia. The native war auxiliary is inbound. So you guys knock out the militia. They've shot a bunch of their tribal auxiliary trying to kill my colonial light cavalry.
chase down the native native warrior auxiliary because we know they're probably going to stick around. They've not lost many men. So all my artillery, what's their range like? Probably attack about here. Yeah, I think the days are done for their general. Let's get my field artillery to the rear to start attacking the general. Let's advance, because this is chiefly a militia army. Enemy general has been killed. New men charge the native warrior auxiliary. Keep killing the native warrior auxiliary over here till they are shattered. General, you men engage them. Yeah, I thought that might happen from the volleys. There's not a lot else we could do. Bring our cavalry over. We're going to start seeing. some of our howitzers to start attacking the enemy that are coming in to reinforce. There we go, everyone is... Everyone is out of here. Shattered, just broken, shattered, shattered, shattered. Everyone's having a bad time. chased on that colonial militia. To be honest, I don't expect them to stick around. The bows are routed. Those troops have come back. Straighten up these two units. They both engage. Charge them down. Just bring our uh, infantry line up to support the next fight. So I think... I think my cavalry to chase down one of their units just because they identified as being broken, not shattered. Pivot our guns, but don't think it's going to matter. Once the 16th Regiment falls, the left flank of our line is going to straighten up to about here. Right now, this Regiment of Foot's been holding its own admirably, as well as that one. Especially as more reinforcements are on their way. All my howitzers focus fire the 16th. The sooner we clear them out, the sooner we can get more firepower against the... Well, I might actually do that now. Line new men up like so. Line new men up like that. Plenty more Italian coats making their way across the battlefield. Granted they're tired, but they're surrounded by bucket loads of troops. I mean, they're all... Lots of them are happy. They're encouraged because their flanks are secure. Thirty-first, twenty-seventh, twentieth, twenty-sixth, sixteenth. Okay, let's start to drop different targets. Let's start to drop quick climb on different targets because we're about to see the sixteenth is probably going to break. There we go. So our line advances. Militia begin to find themselves surrounded. Poor, poor militia. And they're still coming in. <laughs> this is the garrison coming in. Thinking, don't worry, lads, we can make a fight of it. 
we can defend our homelands and then they get here and go oh maybe not we switch to round shot that makes their targeting a bit more flexible not quite as effective you men they've been fighting against the enemy already yep there we go I'm curious if we can even... Is it even possible to rout an army from there being no troops on the field but troops coming in to reinforce? I think. Well, I'm trying to work out. Have they got any more coming in? 34th are coming in. But everyone else, I think, has long since given up the ghost. My foot artillery try and lob shells onto the 36th. They're still coming in. The 34th are upset because of the artillery fire they're already experiencing, plus they're probably taking some damage from misses. There we go. God, this is th <laughs> the background is just full of militia fleeing. Fleeing into the scrub. Like now, do we technically win? Because there's no one on the field. Ah, the 44th have come in. And the 2nd Regiment's coming in as well. But every time it gets quiet, we need to take advantage of the opportunity we've been given to tighten the noose and all the howitzers just attack ground don't even attack any particular unit just fill that area full of lead they're shattered but my cavalry's having a fun time sorry second regiment you're, you're getting a luckier time of it than most because lots of these troops are actually moving there you go, the attack grounding has worked. Yep, there you go. <laughs> now let's wait for the 4th Regiment to join us. So you're actually damaging them before they're technically a target. Oh, the native musket and auxiliary is coming in. No, understandably, they didn't like much of that. <laughs> native Musketman Auxiliary creeping in. More Native Musketman Auxiliary. Oh, they're going to go stealthy, are they? Really? You're going to make me advance and engage you in point blank range? There we go. If you get close enough, they they become visible. It looks that's what we're going to have to do. These native bow auxiliaries are also taking damage. <laughs> but these guys look like because they we've got troops so close they can't go they can't go stealth and go cloaked. So uh, go hidden, I should say. But I think that's probably it. That looks like it's the end of their... Yes, it is. <laughs> Close victory, I don't think so. We got to the point where we were clubbing them before they could even fight on the battlefield. Ooh. Yes, that's right. Sorry, Santa Fe Garrison. Auto that. Bye-bye. <laughs> Desperately clinging for peace. Yeah, just auto the rebels. Bye bye, rebels.
But I think we are definitely on to uh, to finish this campaign. I think if we skip over to Santa Fe, when we attack the city, they will probably call in these guys as reinforced. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Too far away to help them. And we're not going to uh, give them the opportunity to come back. We've already clubbed them. Uh, let's just take Santa Fe. A couple of units. Somehow it says, my army isn't exactly strong either. Um, but I don't foresee it being a being a problem. Our artillery is just going to do an absolute number on the enemy forces. And I don't really think there's much they can do about it. So my guns... Deploy wide. Let my artillery focus on the mortars. Create two wings. Don't really focus on which one's more damaged or which one's less damaged. Just bring war to the enemy. And my artillery focus on their mortars. There we go. Yeah, your quick climb, which ordinarily would be so frightening, will no longer be so. You do not fear me. No, I do not fear you, I should say. Could really do with another volley of artillery fire right now. I'm moving a couple of regiments in to try to cause them upset. Let's push my overall line up. troops. These guys should start to pour fire onto their mortar troops as well. <laughs> Look at these militiamen. Wait a minute, wait a minute, we're gonna form up. <laughs> it's like, oh are you indeed? Even these weak units have something to say about that. Your mortars do not harm, do not afraid, do not make me afraid. Divert two mortars to attack the armed citizenry to the rear. The armed citizenry are losing sight of what their job is supposed to be. You men, push and attack the mortars. My foot artillery engaged the 2nd Regiment Garrison Line. Oh yeah, so because we've pushed them away from their guns, they are in full-on anger man mode. Ignore the firelock armed populous unit. Just 
charge on into the firelock arm citizenry. They're upset. They've gone. The firelock arm citizenry, they're all that remains of a coherent unit. Destroy them. Push them over the edge. Quickly. Come on, General. There we go. Smash. <laughs> There we go. And so ends the Italian States campaign, a campaign that there was a middle, sort of the the early mid game that took so long. It was when we were fighting, we were toing and froing in Europe against a mighty Swedish empire, which we slowly took over. It was a bit of a nightmare um, early on, I must say, but we did come out of it an incredibly strong and powerful empire with troops spanning the globe and the entire map is ours and we've got just oodles of firepower <laughs> so i've got my balance sheet so tax income 558,000 per turn zero trade because obviously no one's trading with us we're trading with us we produce everything the world needs and that's it ivory is right at the top 67 gold per pound i guess didn't, don't, never changed my policies, didn't really change my ministers. If you want to be more efficient, especially that guy, Carlos Lozato. So what, that gave me an extra 6,000-ish? So let's go to lists. Regions, I want to see my most. Yeah, France is the, mo is the wealthiest region, understandably, because France is so big and has so many towns. And then what you will notice is we've got 50,000 region wealth, 27,000, more than half of its region wealth is town wealth, which is upgraded through things like industry and roads and philosophical technology upgrades. That's why I just love them so much, especially for the late games. You just stop needing to care about income because every turn it just boosts massively. Like growth is turn 239 growth every turn is not bad at all, especially when you, when you talk about the, the world. Then behind that you got Moscow, England, the Rhineland, it's quite impressive actually. The Rhineland is so high up. Same with Naples, Stockholm's lower than you'd think. In terms of armies, I'm pretty... Yeah, Vito Spero. Well, to be honest, lots of these, lots of these generals we have are extremely high level because of their... Uh, the amount of fighting we've been doing in in the in India. But yeah. It was a fun campaign. It was a good campaign. But nevertheless, all things must come to an end, and that is the world taken. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you've enjoyed. And I will at the same time this video goes out, well actually I'll probably do it in an hour afterwards, so 9 pm GMT. And I'll put out a faction vote, which will be a faction vote f about um, which faction to play in Napoleon Total War with the Napoleon Total War 3 mod, which I haven't played in a long time, and apparently it's quite slow. Well, it, it is slow to play. It's meant to be a bit more realistic. Um, so, yeah. It should be fun, but it'll be different. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you next time.